The way we make things is changing, radically. A new set of ideas and trends have emerged and combined to create a new industrial revolution, one led by people and human innovation. They're using ideas like collaborative design teams and leaner, more customizable manufacturing. Once upon a time, a factory made one thing. Now, a factory can make almost as many things as there are people to imagine them. From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. The first solar-powered water recycling toilets have been installed at a primary school near Midrand. Anine for Murlin reports. ICT distributor Mustek donated four solar-powered water recycling toilets installed by green sanitation company SmartSan to the Orofila Primary School in Olivenote Bosch near Midrand, Gauteng this month as part of their CSI initiative for education. Orofila Primary School is the first green school in Gauteng. This school, believe it or not, is the greenest school we are told in Hautang. Why is it, um, what makes it the greenest school? The greenest school because um, the technology for actually building the, 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 the walls, the insulation, they're using um, solar water heating systems and the, the principal of the school here is very, very accommodating. He's very excited about being involved with renewables and he wants his school, this greenest school, to be even greener. SmartSand CEO Jurgen Graupe explained that the sanitation system used a combination of biological anaerobic processes and nano filtration systems that ensured 100% of all dissolved contaminants such as nitrates, nitrites and phosphates were removed from the filtered water. And the main aim that we have here is firstly to get rid of the sewage, the raw sewage, uh, solids and so on, waste that's flushed into the toilet system and then uh, uh, on the filtration side is that we're trying to filtrate out your smaller dissolved particles, especially if you look like uh, your phosphates, nitrates and so on. He added that the recycling of the toilet flush water ensured flush waterborne sanitation without a municipal water connection to the toilet cistern and that the cistern tank was able to accommodate rainwater. Dignified waterborne sanitation for everyone. So there's no more excuse uh, or uh, uh, challenges to do waterborne. First, uh, then secondly, the other criteria is we looked at the environment. Uh, we want to stop underground water pollution. Um, uh, we don't want raw sewage going into the underground systems or so on. Uh, and we don't uh, want to constrain the scarce water that we have by um, using the same water over and over so you save a lot of water on that and then of course being self-sustainable on, on electricity you don't want to use electricity from outside um, or as little as possible. He further noted that it was very simple and quick to install a unit and in areas where flooding was a problem the unit could be installed above ground or even elevated above flood levels. He mentioned that the unit is totally sealed and can even be placed on a riverboat for communities living on water. Owing to the effects of gas filter cap, there are no unpleasant odor emissions and the units can therefore be placed in densely populated areas without any risk. The units also pose no risk of leakage, thus preventing the spread of waterborne diseases such as cholera, diarrhea and malaria. Orofila Primary School Principal Clever Shikwambane stated that the school promoted educating children about recycling and saving water. As a school we need to promote uh, education and the project itself is part of education, where you have to tell children about recycling, where you have to tell children about saving water. And so it is appropriate for a school to have such a project. And uh, the other thing is that uh, it will help us uh, because we've identified the, the smallest children, the grade one children, to use these toilets so that uh, when they get into the toilets, there is no one who will disturb them or no one who will uh, bully them and all that. So it's uh, really a very important uh, project for a school. And uh, the other thing is that uh, the project itself is something that one needs to be proud of. It is not a pit toilet where you find that uh, there, is a, there is smell and uh, it is not uh, environmentally friendly and it is not healthy. But this project gives dignity to our children, gives pride to our children. And I think uh, it is something that one needs to say, oh, we are proudly South African. 
He added that the school was proud of the project and that it was a step towards eliminating pit toilets, which could have unpleasant odors and were environmentally unfriendly. Other news making headlines this week, the manufacturing sector is key to Gauteng's growth and Toyota mills its continued Dakar sponsorship as South Africa's team comes second. Productivity declines in the manufacturing sector, influenced by the depressed global demand for South African products, is to blame for the rapid contraction in Gauteng's gross domestic product in recent years. Manufacturing occupies a special place and is a critical component of our strategy to foster economic recovery and decisively address the troika of unemployment, poverty and inequality. The decline in manufacturing and deindustrialization our manufacturing has declined rapidly from contributing 21% of the GDP in 2008 to 11.7% in 2014. This rapid contraction has been followed by factory shutdowns, downsizing and the massive loss of jobs in places like Eguruleni, as I have said. Toyota South Africa Motors was happy with what its sponsorship of the Toyota Imperial South Africa Dakar team had achieved over the last few years, but changes to race regulations this year didn't make as big a difference in levelling the playing field as team principal Glenn Hall had hoped for. It's actually a difficult question to answer because we had a, a lot of pressure, perhaps a lot to say the least, to get the regulations adjusted to make it fair for everybody and the word fair was really paramount so I could do it with tremendous integrity to fight hard because I knew it was uh, what was needed. So we didn't get the amount of um, freedom that we thought we should have got, however we continued as a team to fight to prepare the cars in the best spirit possible. And yes we were surprised that the regulations didn't make uh, as much of a difference as they did, and uh, obviously the new Hilux was faster than the, uh, than the old vehicle, the development goes on. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.